welcome to the NHS community. Um, I'm just going to be wrapping on about uh, inter inter interactive reports. So I'm sure you've been doing lots of these conferences. You've all been learning lots of stuff with R. You've got loads of data. And uh, I think my, my, my talk's about, OK, you've got loads of data. What are you going to do with it? And how are you going to sort of show people what you can do uh, with all your data? So why is that going weird? Let's move that out of the way. So, uh, firstly, me. I, my name's Samuel Miller. I'm information manager down in sunny Devon, uh, Devon Partnership Trust. We're a sort of a mental health trust across Devon. Uh, I've worked in healthcare analytics for about six years, and worked in police and child protection analytics before that. And uh, yeah, lots of different random roles before that, which uh, yeah, we can go discuss at some point. Um, I've been an R user for about eighteen months now. I Yes. Um, previously, lots of SQL and far too much Excel. Um, so that's kind of my background there. And I've been an R trainer uh, doing the, the R sort of introduction to R course for about a year. So, like I say, not a massive user of R, sort of like not not years and years experience. And I'm also yeah tr trying to learn some more R and also sort of dipping my toe into the, the world of Python. So uh, all that I'm about to show you has been shared freely and um, yeah, absolutely stolen from all over the place. So very little of this work. I think I've adapted lots and lots of stuff out there. I mean, the beauty of R is that there's some really, really clever people have, who have made beautiful packages that do amazing things. And then you can just cream off the top of those and make yourself look really clever, which is uh, where I want to come in. So we will make a start with the actual demo. So if you get to your uh, R Studio cloud, which I hopefully there is a uh, a link in the chat somewhere and click on that and click on markdown and if i magically swap this over here um you should have i suppose i'll just start here um you should come into a thing that looks like this type in markdown here and search and it will find all the things that are markdown skip all the uh, introduction to markdown ones which there are lots and lots and lots and keep scrolling down until you find this one here that says markdown and click on that one and it will prepare a project i am am i still sharing this screen yeah the cloud screen yeah that's all right it's went a bit weird on me for a second so hopefully you should come up uh, with a big piece of code. So this uh, workshop isn't necessarily around, it's, it's, it's not particularly hands-on, it's kind of uh, me going, gonna show you what we can do with um, uh, some, some R Markdown, go through some sort of funky interactive tables and bits and pieces that we can, uh, that we can build and then what we'll do, I mean, it'd be fabulous if you've got two screens, we can sort of do go side by side, look at what the R's produced as its output, and then also then look at the code. Um, we sort of chug our way through it pretty, uh, well, quite fast. Um, and then there'd be sort of room for questions at the end if we want to do any sort of Q&A bits. Um, I've tried to write comments as best as I can. I'm just looking at that very first page and uh, I don't know if you've noticed that the new R, uh, R Studio actually has like an inline live spell check, um, whereas the older version, which I wrote this on, didn't have the live uh, inline spell check. So I'm just looking at my very first thing and uh, the amount of spelling mistakes I've got in all the comments. So please have a look at them and laugh heartily at me and go, ha, 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 you can't spell. Um, so, yeah. There is a spell check in the, the R Studio, but um, I haven't updated mine yet. So we still got people coming in. Are you, Howie, is, are people kind of at this stage? Have we got this up on the screen? I don't know if we can do, I don't know if you can do thumbs or hands up in, uh, in Zoom. You can do hands up. Um, yeah. If people do smiley faces in the chat, that's usually quite good. Uh, there are a couple of people who are struggling to log into our Studio and I'll try okay. and keep them. I'll get them back to this bit. Um, okay. Just to be, bear in mind, some people are struggling with that. 
So have we got some smiley faces then? Let's, yeah, lots of smiley faces. Okie dokie. So what we want to do is press the magic knit button here and knit it. And it will chug through and uh, do some stuff. Hopefully it will do it today. Yep, it's sort of chugging its way through. It will run through the code and then basically it will do a pop-up and uh, render a document for you. So blah, 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 blah. You've attempted to... Anyway, it doesn't like pop-ups. I don't want to do a pop-up thing. Oh, there we go. If you do try again, it will work. So it will take a few more seconds to finish and you can make it full screen. And you should, ha it should have rendered a, a document for you. So have we got, I don't know, more smiley faces now to say, how has this happened for you? Yeah, fabulous, at least a couple. So we whiz through the report together. Um, I'll show it on, I don't know, hopefully you've got two screens. You can sort of play with it on one screen. I'll show you on here, another screen, and uh, we sort of chug our way through it. So basically, this is a rendered um, HTML document. Um, as you know, you guys, uh, you've just created a standalone HTML document. So this document isn't linked to the internet. It's not saved on the internet. It's just locally saved on your computer. All the all the charts and all the bits and pieces um, is uh, stored within the HTML and uses a uh, conversation. Uh, JavaScript and, and various bits and pieces. So all the data, everything, uh, all the charts of it are completely self-contained within a file. You can save this file and it will just save into one, uh, one HTML document, which potentially you can attach to an email and you can email it to somebody. You don't have to have it connected or hosted or any of those things. So it's a complete standalone, which uh, to me is quite mind blowing. Um, there are some links from this to the internet, um, which um, we will go through and uh, we will have a look at. But like I say, the actual document itself, when you when you send it, you know, I could email it to you and you could open it up and you would have this instance. So uh, starting off, I'm not going to read through it all, but basically let's start off with our little, first little thing, which is Zoe's favorite, um, the animated GIF. So you can do a link to an external uh, picture or um, either static, or you can uh, go to sort of lovely Giphy places and you can put um, animations, etc., into your reports if you so wish. I was trying to find a, uh, I think there's a really nice GIF which has got transparent snowflakes. So I can do a Christmas report, have it hidden in behind the background and have snowflakes uh, going cascading all over my reports, but I haven't quite got that working yet. So. Um, like I say, so beautiful thing is that we've got a lovely report here. Um, as we scroll down, what we are going to be using is, is our markdown. So very basically, this is an R markdown document. Um, you can use it to author sort of um, HTML, Word, etc. But like I said, we're going to be using HTML, um, which allows us to do lots and lots of different clever things. And as I say, I'll show you the report first and then we sort of flick to see what the code looks like. Um, so yeah, you should have something along. Yeah, try again and that should work. So first of all, we've got some sort of basic um, basic formats that we can do. You can do all your sort of bold, uh, etc. I don't know if you've noticing, but as you scroll down, you've got this lovely little table of contents here, um, which is directly interactive as you sort of go down and it sort of floats uh, next to your page. And as you scroll down, it dynamically opens. You can also click on this and jump instantly to a, uh, a part of your document. And again, in a minute, I'll, I'll show you sort of 
would go under the hood and see how this is all built. It, uh, how this is all built. So you can do things like build headers. You can obviously map about with your text and strike throughs and um, make little blocks things. You can make lists within your charts and tables. You can make uh, numbered lists and indents and sub lists and start a list one, two here and then pick it up three, four later on. Uh, you can color in sections. Uh, you can add sort of footnotes. Um, you can make some very sort of basic tables, sort of column headings and uh, uh, just split those out with uh, some very, very simple under the hood stuff, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. You can sort of align stuff within tables. So really, really basic stuff. If you are a HTML fan, um, you can mess about with HTML tags. So yep, technically you can change your font to large and put it into Comic Sans, uh, but that doesn't mean you should. Um, so other funky things you can do is tab sets. So here we have, uh, let's say under the hood, this has used something called NHSR data sets, and it's just read in some basic data and it's uh, it's just used some sort of generic synthetic data to create some charts. Um, I'm not entirely, I think it's something to do with attendances over time and there's three different types. There's a type one, a type two, and then there's the other. Um, so yeah, quite a boring old static chart. However, we can do sort of a funkier thing on here. So we've got some little tabs here, which we can actually click on and uh, change the graph. So really, really useful thing. Um, I find if I send out a report and it's got five charts on it, they will get to about the second one and they go oh, bored now and not look at any others. Send them a, a HTML enabled thing and then uh, give them five charts they can click on their little button through. They will play to their heart's content and your managers will actually look at your data, um, which again, I think is really, 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 really important. Um, so sort of tab sets, really, really simple thing that you can do within the R markdown. And let's say you can jump so you can change it by team, by area or, you know, whatever you want. But again, quite a static chart, doesn't really do much. Um, within your blurb, you can do sort of various different things. So you can refer to your data. So you can, um, obviously the beauty of the thing about the, the R markdown is that you can have your charts and your narrative all in one place. Um, I know, for instance, I do a lot of reporting where I've, I don't know, write a bit of SQL then drop it into Excel, create a really horrible chart, then have to copy and paste that chart into some Word and then write some narrative to go with my chart. And oh, it's really, really tedious. RLX basically allows you to pull the data, manipulate the data, create the chart and then also create the blurb and just do all that in one go. And because then you can create a workflow, you can then when you need to come and do, if it's a repeatable thing, you can just press the button and your whole report is there, done, automated, uh, bish, bash, bosh, sorted. So you can sort of take stuff from your data. Um, so for instance, the total number of tendencies in the data set was or oh, 80, yeah, 8 million odd. Um, and again, we'll show you in a minute how you can sort of pull mix and match and sort of pull variables and pull stuff from your, your code into your into your work. Um, you can put sort of dynamic things. So here, um, it's worked out that this is the day. We've uh, just added a system date of uh, when you've pressed the, pressed the button. Um, so, la 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 la. Tables. So we start off sort of basic tables. The very, very most basic table is the one just the base R table. Like if you do like a head, I'm assuming people have got a little bit of um, our knowledge. If not, then um, yeah, but we, we might sort of come back to that and uh, see how that goes. But anyway, so you can just add in your very, very basic R standard table. Um, but there are some really, really nice libraries out there which allow you to do much prettier tables. Um, so the first library we're gonna look at here, like I said, in my uh, lovely interactive thing here, we can press cable. And this shows you, um, just you can pull out a, a very basic data table. Um, it does have a little bit of a hover over bit on there, which again is quite nice. That's a little bit of interactivity. Um, it's really good. Cable's really, really good for when you've got like a static report. Um, 
because it's really easy to do sort of indenting, uh, sort of highlighting colors and conditional formatting and all of that kind of stuff. You can really do really, really, really super, super easy in cable. Um, so it makes really, really pretty charts. Uh, sorry, not charts, tables. Have you got all the packages installed from the top? Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can do sort of various bits and pieces uh, within cable. But again, really, really static and not terribly exciting. It's a, a very static table. So now we are starting getting into the realms of, yeah, a little bit more exciting um, in that now we've got an interactive table. So uh, this allows us to do, so we've got some data here. Um, if we want to, we've got some nice little sliders that we can mess about with. And what's going on there? There we go. Uh, for you can add in filters, so you can do nice little sliders for your data. It's a bit slow on this one. Um, and uh, you can sort of pick specific or codes. And you can do several codes if you want to. Uh, if we wanted to, we can click on the tendencies here and it will resort them uh, low to high, or we can do high to low. Uh, we can type in, we can clear our filters and we can, what else can we do? We can do, uh, oh, we can do a search up here. So we can type in RRK and it will then filter the data to RRK. Um, if we wanted to, at the moment, it's showing one to 10 of 45 entries. There is a little button here and we can show 50 entries if we want to. So we can expand that data out. If you want to, you can press the copy button and that will copy the data to clipboard uh, based on what you filtered it to. If you wish to, you can press CSV. Again, that will create a CSV of whatever the data is that you've filtered it to. Uh, PDF, again, it will turn it into a PDF or it, uh, you can do print and it will go straight to print. So this definitely adds that little bit more, uh, a bit of a sparkle to a data table. And um, th that's really nice. Again, really useful when you just got sort of flat data and you just want to sort of, uh, display it but also you know if you want to filter it by team or by sort of certain times or stuff so all that kind of stuff that you would do with excel in a either in a pivot table or a filter but uh people people uh, seem to have problems with excel um especially managers so again really really nice uh, they can have a play with that and so yeah you can do all these sort of things filter free so that's one type of table um uh, another type of table is reactor reactor table, um, which creates different types of react uh, tables. This is more for two when you've got kind of um, indexes and sort of a hierarchical hierarchical structure within your data. So, for instance, um, what this does is groups things, and then you kind of expand your groups to get down to your subheadings. So for instance, if you had I don't know, a northern team and you then had or a northern area and you had three teams within that area, you could create an aggregate for your northern area and then you could drill down and expand it so that it would then do the breakdown of um, the three areas, which I think I'll show you next. But So you can click on these little bits here and then it will expand that data out to everything that's within that area and then you can chop it down. I think if you go on this one, um, so we've looked here, so we've got different time periods I've uh, grouped it by, and then you can open it out. Um, and then we've got our different uh, uh, types, one, two, and other. Um, and then there's sort of the median of the type ones in 20, uh, first in uh, October 2016. And then if you wanted to, you could then open that out more. And then you can get down to sort of drill down to that individual provider level data. So I'd say it allows you to create that sort of hierarchical scratch structure around, you know, this is director A has this and then all the teams within there. So you can give a, a directorate level or a trust level and then a, a directorate and then a locality and then down to team. And then, you know, potentially you could cut it right down to worker level stuff for, for metrics and stuff and be able to show that in a really, really nice, easy way. 
again, you know, without having a sort of a full BI solution to, to do that kind of stuff. So that's that's pretty good. Um, I will, uh, within the code, it does show you, so I use this for um, sort of training sometimes, and um, uh, there is a really good, nice package called Esquizzy, um, which I'm not gonna show you now, but, well, I might do it if we've got time. I'm just looking at time, but yeah. Um, if you're very new to sort of ggplot and um, or we just want a really quick way that you can do very much like an Excel, click and drag, try to create charts really, really quickly. It's a really good little um, little function. Uh, but anyway, we can play with that later. Anyway, so here we are. We're back to our lovely plot now, um, which does a does a thing. Um, we showed you earlier that we could do sort of tab sets and create sort of free charts and flip between the three, but again, not very exciting. So what we can do now is have Plotly. So on the face of it, looks the same. Um, however, if you start hovering over it, it does start doing some funkier things um, and you can sort of hover over it and get individual sort of a little hover over do the spark plots? No, they, for some reason, go hideously wrong. Um, there seems to be a little bit of bug in my code for the spark box plots. Yes, they do exist and they do work if you read that bit of code separately, it works fine. But so, for some reason, um, I've, I've messed it up somehow and it doesn't work. Um, so yes, the spark box plots do exist. Um, they're just invisible and only very clever people can see them. Um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> go back to the to this. Uh, you can also click on your little things here, and you can uh, remove or add the individual plots, which again uh, is really really useful. Um, for instance, I don't know if you wanted to sort of try to sort of compare certain things, or if you've got lots of things, you can do crazy things like uh, click and drag over a certain portion of your chart and it will zoom into that piece of the chart. Uh, if you so wish, you can uh, press the camera at that point and it will download a, uh, it will create a, uh, an image file of what you've, what you've plotted. Um, we can reset our axis, axes here. We can, so at the moment we've got it on sort of single hover over. You can click over compare on hover and then it will give you all three at once. So if you wanted to look at a specific point, for instance, and see what the uh, attendances were across those different things, whatever they were, at a given point of time, you can, you know, really, really good at uh, having a play with those. And yet you can make it smaller, larger, uh, toggle spike lines. I can't remember if that's relevant for oh, this it is. Yep, so you can also toggle spike lines so that you can, specifically try to measure where you are to be able to, to see what's going on. Um, so yeah, Plotly is fantastic and allows you to do lots and lots of uh, really, really clever things with charts. And like I say, when I go to the code in a minute, uh, when we run through these, uh, let's say, it will just blow your mind how super, super duper easy these things are. So, uh, I do apologize. There's another little bug in my code. This is becoming a little thing. But what we can do is press play on our uh, animated graph and it will show uh, stuff over time. <coughs> I've I noticed the other day I've got a really ridiculously stupid bug in the ordering of my time series and something's crept in, which means it doesn't quite work. But uh, I will uh, I will fix it very shortly. But anyway, it works up until then. So if we just play with this bit and pretend that the rest of it works. Um, but anyway, it gives you a lovely little slider that you can uh, you can have a look at and uh, you can sort of play with it over sort of time. And again, because it's in Plotly, you've got all the things that you can then zoom into that little section if you wished. Uh, and you can do all the other bits and pieces as well. Whether animated graphs are that impressive, I don't know. Um, I, I've sent a few of them out to people and they absolutely love them. I don't know if it tells them anything more, gives them any more particular data insights. It just blows their minds and they love it. But um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> it's tricky. Um, 
So that's, uh, that's another type of graph. Uh, another one we got here is die graphs, which are really, really good for um, time series analysis. So we've got a very, very basic, um, this is just, again, all from this very, very basic data set, which um, fell free to look at. Uh, and basically it gives us our sort of emissions over time, just uh, again, you can sort of click, hover over and it gives you various bits. We can uh, obviously scroll and zoom in and, and do stuff like that. What is really nice, and I have I should have labeled it, but I forgot, is we've got this. Uh, you can add ni nice little widgets to the graph. So this one basically gives you a rolling average, and basically you can specify what your average, uh, what period you want for your rolling average. So you can put in a free, and it will then calculate your data over a three month rolling average or a. 12 month rolling average to sort of smooth things out if you so wish. Uh, and, but the fact you can kind of do it on the fly is uh, phenomenal. You don't have to calculate it, it does it for you, which again is, is uh, mind-blowingly brilliant. Um, you just basically say that I want to add it in there and uh, it does all the, all the hard work for you. So that's really, really good. Um, so other one, uh, tree map. So obviously we all know pie charts are evil and bad. Um, you can do pie charts in R, but I'm not gonna show you how, because you know, they're evil and bad. However, um, for, for completedness, sometimes you do want to compare size of thing A versus size of thing B. Um, so the kind of nicest I came up with was uh, a tree map which yeah it's all right it's not great but uh, but basically you can just feed in some data and it will create uh, create this for you um, you can change the color schemes to have them more gradiated and um, the, the pattern as well you can you can alter and, and mess about with if you so wish uh, so yeah that's a, as a, a tree map then we have a collapsible tree. So I love these. These are fantastic. This is uh, this is really good if you've got again sort of hierarchical data, as in, or what's really really good if you've got like pathway data. So you can do referral to assessment to treatment and sort of follow things through a pathway. So what we start with is it's a bit tricky to show you because the data run here isn't isn't that good. But basically, you start with your base data, and then it kind of splits out into various different uh, trees, depending on what follows what. So um, probably make it easy. So if you click on the nice little node here, it will then split out. So RK9, we can see the node slightly bigger. So this had more of these things, uh, had 92 compared to 51 and uh, 36. And then you can split it out. And then you can see how many of those went into one and then you can close them up and open up others and then you can see that one only had two go through that way that only had the one that had the three so you can let's say as long as you've got sort of hierarchical data or sort of pathway data the numbers that went to this and then you set the next level and how many went from that to, to that and how many went from that to that and how many went from that to that it's quite easy to set up the data to, to be able to do that. And then let's say the, the actual collapsible tree itself, um, let's say I will show you in a minute, the actual code to create it is just, I think it's like one line literally. Um, but yeah, really, really, really beautiful. Um, and if you've got a really nice one that really describes a, a pathway, uh, you can make some really, really good things. And it's really good to understand insights around um, you know what where your patients are going or what outcomes they have depending on what pathway they go through and just being able to visualize that kind of stuff's uh, really really cool because that's really really quite hard sometimes and it's just a really really lovely relaxing little uh, collapsible tree if you make a really really big one and have it on a on a massive screen and uh, yeah spend hours playing with those um then we've got uh, leaflets, which hopefully will work. Um, I know it does cause problems with some people's proxies, and I know we've had trouble with it before, um, whether it gets blocked by the, the uh, 
draconian nhs server or not so hopefully you can see a map of beautiful devon and if you can't i'm, I'm very sorry for you um, i am i'm about here um so beautiful thing about this it links into openstreetmap you can um do huge amounts of things you can plot areas you can do sort of full-on heat maps you can draw lines between places you can draw circles around things you can do all those sort of beautiful mappy type things. Um, you can also um, sort of scroll and, and, and move it around and, and, and zoom. Uh, what's really, really nice is as you zoom, uh, your little marker sort of stays uh, uh, to the same uh, scale, which is really, really nice. And it does that as well beautifully with um, sort of lines and things like that. And it also scales automatically. We've been having to play with uh, QGIS and having real problems with uh, it completely throwing a wobble. You can also sort of layer your textures on your map. So, for instance, here, just as my example, I've got team A, B, and C, and you can click on those. And again, you can add whatever you want, obviously. But if you want to sort of overlay certain things, you can say, you know, it's you can put lots of different layers on your map and uh, again, send out this to somebody without having to have a piece of software or uh, you know, a really, really complicated thing. And you can just set it up with, a, you know, and send it to anybody in your trust with the appropriate thing all set up and then they can play with it, which again is crazy stuff. Um, uh, anyway, so that was Leaflet. How am I doing for time? Okay. So uh, five points to whoever guesses the book first. Um, so this, again, links up to uh, Creative Commons, uh, what was it, Project Guttenberg, and has downloaded a book. And it's done a very simple word cloud. My word cloud will look different from yours. It creates a new random one each time. Um, and again, I'll show you how to do the, the, the codes all in there and it's, it's not really nice. But again, also we're looking at interactive. Correct, well done, well done, Lynn. Uh, what's also really nice is that you can sort of click and hover on the individual words and it will give you the word count for that particular uh, word. So you can sort of go out to the really bizarre thing that, uh, yeah. The executioner appears five times in Alice in Wonderland. Actually, it's Alice, yeah, I meant was Looking Glass of Wonderland. Uh, Caterpillar, 28 times. Uh, so Turtle, 57 times. Obviously, I thought Caterpillar would have been more than Turtle, but there you go. Um, but again, really, really nice, lovely little interactive thing that you can sort of hover your mouse over and uh, get those. Uh, and then finally, we have our pivot table, which um, I'm sure you Excel users will probably get your hang around, uh, which is basically uh, a pivot table. Um, so you can click, I don't know, and drag and do sort of various things with your pivot table as you would uh, and move them out. So at the moment, we've just got the count of attendances. What's beautiful is you can click here and we can say, I want my average of uh, breaches. Uh, what's really, really nice, and I love this so much, is that I can click median and uh, get a pivot table with median, which is one of my big, horrible bugbears of uh, Microsoft that uh, both, both SQL and Excel do medians so badly and there's no median function with a pivot table, which really annoys me. Um, and yeah, you can also do all your sort of fractions of columns and uh, do all that sort of stuff, standard deviations. You can change it into a heat map if you so wish and put some colors on it. Um, I'm not sure if it works. Uh, I don't think it does actually. Um, oh, yeah, you can change it into a table bar chart. I don't know if it'll let you know. Again, I think there's a little bug with the R Studio version. Uh, but what you can do is turn it into a chart as well, based on whatever you want there. It's not doing any of the charts. Um, but again, you can mess about with that. And again, you can give it send it out to your clinicians and say, here's a pivot table. 
uh, play with it. And um, I, I don't know, I'm thinking generally how many pivot tables have I ever sent out to people when they go, oh, I don't understand what I'm doing. I don't, how do I find this? Or I want this, but I want it shown by team. And you know, the fact that they can, you can send somebody one of these for some reason, they get in their head that they can't break it because it's not Excel and it's uh, it's it's different. And again, when it comes to, uh, yep, yeah, no, they're all on CRAN, um, and I'll I'll show you those in a minute. So that is very 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 basically all the all the the show off bit. So now what we do is have a look sort of side by side the 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 report and the code. So like I say, we can click really lovely on our little table of contents and go back to the introduction. Uh, I recommend doing it, uh, where are we? Oh God, I've got too much stuff open. I'll see if this works. No. And try to show you vaguely side by side how to create some of these functions um, i appreciate it. i've got like 15 minutes so you know, drink some drink some more coffee and then uh, spout really really fast so if you watch this on playback you just put it on slow speed and uh... right so the code to make this table of contents is that <laughs> Um, which is, that's it. That's the only code you need to put in your YAML header and it will create a table of contents uh, in your HTML document and it will have all that interactiveness and jump to your headings and do all of that stuff and float. Um, you can have it so that it floats, or doesn't float or it sits on the right hand side or uh, a little banner across the top. You can you can adjust it if you so wish, but I just did the, the most simple one possible. Um, so yeah, table of contents, yes. Doc float, yes. Which basically creates this. That's all the code you need to create your little table of contents. Um, here is the big splurge of libraries, which it all uses. Um, let's say you can go to, these are all on CRAN. Um, you can, yeah, get, get them all through. Probably a fair few of them have got some dependents. So um, obviously I'm not saying get them all in, in one go, um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's a few bits and uh, that, yeah, if you've got a half an hour spare, um, chug your way through and uh, download all of those. Uh, so uh, here's some stuff where I'm just setting up some charts for later. Uh, so we want to say blah, 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 blah. So things like these little uh, box outs, simply put a, uh, a right arrow at the start of your text and it will turn that into a box out. Really, really super, super simple stuff. Uh, I want to insert a, a lovely little animated GIF. Um, again, a little bit of code, just explanation mark, open square brackets, and then the link to it. You can either link to an external data source as I have, so that's pulling that out from the internet, or if you want your corporate logo, you can just uh, refer to your shared drive or your personal drive or whatever and shove that on there. Um, only problem with that uh, I found is if I'm sending it, uh, no, it's all right, because once it's rendered, it will be there. But if you're passing the code to somebody else and they're trying to run it and they haven't got access to whatever that is, obviously that uh, won't appear. But once you've rendered that document, this document does not need to connect to the internet to pull this through, it's all embedded. Um, it does mean that this document's about 10 meg big, but it's got a lot of data in there as well. So um, yeah, swings and roundabouts. So introducing our markdown, so that's just bringing through a, uh, a, a thing. So if we want all these headings and sort of subheadings that work here within uh, sort of various bits and pieces, it's simply hashtags in front of your um, in front of your uh, heading. As soon as you put those hashtags in there, so if you start typing in, whoop, I've got a status four hundred three. Nice. Hopefully, that's I think that's just our studio. It'll load again. So 
Oh, well, that... it just sometimes loses connection. Yeah, oh. it's not your code. It's not me. Uh, so if you hashtag new... Okie dokie, this is going to be fun. New header, it automatically realises... Oh, stop it. <laughs> it automatically realises that it's a new header uh, and uh, will make it all blue. Or if you type something and then... Oh, stop that. Very dull. It will uh, it will push it through. Okay. And then when I knit that next time, it will automatically add it into the right hierarchy within my uh, within my table. So, uh, so things like here, where I'm saying I've got lots of different headers, you can just change the amount of hash signs you put in front of your header, and it will change the size. Uh, if you want a line break across something, you can just do three asterisks. You can do bold and italics just by putting asterisks around what you want to type, and it will do those automatically. Again, with subscript or superscript, so you can sort of compare what that's doing here to what that's doing there. Go away. Uh, like I say, little block outs, you can just put a uh, line in front of there. Lists. Um, Again, just an asterisk in front or a, uh, a plus sign, and it will convert those into lists. If you've got a numbered list, you can just put a uh, ampers, no, that's not an ampersand, that's an at sign uh, within brackets, and it will convert that automatically into numbers. So like this, final example of that. And then when you continue later on, it will pick up from where you were previously and carry on the, the list numbers, which is again, really, really useful if you can't remember where you are. Uh, sensitive data, yep. So basically um, uh, the base data will be saved within your HTML document. So you have to treat it as if you're as if it's an Excel document, essentially, with all the caveats that come with that. So it's it's not linked to the internet, but if you are sending it internally, that's fine. If you are sending sensitive data externally, then you would have to do it the same as you would if it was, you know, patient patient identifiable information within an Excel sheet. So uh, in of itself, it's fine, but yeah, just treat it like an Excel sheet, basically. Um, so where are we? We've got our lists. We can do things like that. Uh, we can add in uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what am I doing? Little color bits are there. So you can add in little color bits. Um, so you can add in columns in the data in your stuff so columns come out really really weird uh, within your markdown but then they render beautifully within your code i haven't mentioned it here but um i'm sure i don't know if you've noticed but i shrunk this down to half my screen and it's adapted and affected to the screen because it's an html uh, HTML5, it will adapt. You can open this on your mobile and it will again adapt to your mobile. All the interactive features um, again work, will work on your phone. So you can email this out to somebody, they can open it on their phone and all those interactive features will work, um, which again is just quite mind blowing. Um, obviously, it's a little bit small to see sometimes depending on the size of your phone. But um, yeah, if you're sending it out on a tablet or whatever, it's it's great. Um, I won't go too much into those. But yeah, you can do some sort of basic table. So let's get to the more exciting bits. Uh, tab sets. Uh, basically, it's just a little bit of code here to say that I want to do some tab sets. And then you tell it at the end when you want to stop doing tab sets. Everything between those, it will treat as uh, all these um, bits here, will uh, it will treat them as a different subset. So that's all these little bits here. Uh, and basically, I'm just creating three different plots, and uh, it just displays whichever one. And, and like I say, you can do tab set fade to give it a little bit of Christmas, so it just uh, glides between the two there. So let's have a look at some stuff. Uh, so cable, let's jump to those. So cable like that, uh, literally, 
Uh, you got our data two, which is basically the data up above. So it's the same data as that. It's just in a basic format and basic cable. And then you can just add some very, very basic options to it and it will render a, a nice chart table for you. Uh, here's one where I've just added a few more bits to it so that I've told it that I want row four to be uh, in bold, background to be yellow, um, and row seven to be bold, color white, and the uh, so the text white and the background red. And you can either do it by um, specifying yellow or you can go down to sort of specific color code if you know all your color codes off the heart. Um, you can also sort of pack rows. So one to three here are indented, which does all this if you want to do sort of various bits and pieces. Data table. So this is the first of like the interactive tables uses the same data. I'm using the same data as I did for, for those tables. And again, that's the code in order to create this crazy interactive table. So once you've got your data to create it, put it into an interactive table is like next to nothing. Um, so yeah, you can add filters at the top or the extensions, which are the buttons, your uh, what buttons you want to add in, your list length, so you can specify your defaults for all of these. Um, yeah, and that basically creates all of those things with your filters. It, manu it creates all the lovely bits and pieces for you there. Uh, React table, which is this one here. So I've done absolutely nothing with the data on this one, apart from grouped it by the organization codes and uh, tell it how many minimum rows I want. So this, I'm just speeding up because I'm recognizing there's not a lot of time left. Um, just telling you how many rows we've got. And uh, again, I can create sort of aggregates by medians and max and means here and sort of do various different groups. Uh, the, which one's this? This is, oh, so this is my sparklines one. If you run that code separately, it will work. But for some reason, it doesn't want to play games. Uh, I do recommend you have a player uh, squeeze if you ever get time. And there's some instructions here on how to do it. Uh, so Plotly. So this is my first interactive Plotly uh, thing. So that basically creates. So this is a bog standard ggplot of this which is your, your bog standard data, attendances, color, group by, hopefully nothing out strangely there. And then to turn it into this interactive plot, I basically say ggplotly and just ggplotly it. So again, literally that's all you need to do in order to create that chart that has all those. So all, that, all the functionality in that is just built into plot, ggplotly and then your plot. And it will do that with box plots. It will do it with whatever type of GG plot you chuck into it. It will uh, make it. Animated graphs, not going to go into that, especially because it doesn't work quite properly there. Uh, has got a load more stuff in to do because you have to um, filter it by times and, and, and various bits and pieces. But I'm not going to go through all that now. Uh, but the code is all there, and you can have a look at how that works. Uh, so DY graphs, again, a little bit more complicated code, but um, hopefully you can see it's not massive. And most of this is just to say what color you want it. So that's that's all colors, that's your um, sort of crosshairs. And then you can sort of add various bits and pieces on there around. Uh, it adds all these things on automatically. Tree map, um, literally get some data and then just tell it to tree map it. And I want organization code by type and the size by attendances. So that's created that little bit. So it's just linked them by uh, organization code and type and group them by set attendances. So all of that just is one bit of line. So yeah, collapsible tree. This was our lovely little uh, funky tree diagram. Uh, again, get the data just tell it what the hierarchy is and then feed it into that. So these beautiful, interactive, lovely tree things all come through in one line there. Uh, leaflets, which is maps. 
Uh, a few more areas here because we've got to set up sort of various different labels. Um, I've put in postcodes and then I've fed it out to a geocoder so that I can get the longitude and latitudes in order to plug those in. Again, feel free to have a look at the code and see how it's doing that. So I've basically fed in ped, uh, postcodes and it's geocoded it for me, which is, again, is a really phenomenal thing, but have a play with that. Um, and then because I've done sort of three layers, you have to kind of do it three times to create each layer of the map. Word cloud, uh, oh, that's our Alice in Wonderland, where basically we are reading in some data from Project Gutenberg, reads the text, chops out a load of the nonsense, it drops all the punctuations, drops a load of the lowercase, uh, reviews all the numbers, removes a load of stop words, so it automatically takes out those and ands and acts and all the little words that you obviously have a lot but aren't meaningful. Um, you can specify your own stop words. So for instance, at the bottom of every page here, it said uh, copyright and electronic and notice, and I had to remove those. And then once you've kind of done all your text, the bits, the actual bit to turn it into a word cloud is one line, which again, I really, really love that once you've done all your stuff, it's just one line of code to create the actual word cloud itself. Um, and then our pivot table, again, one line of code, tell it that I want to do an R pivot table on this piece of data. And these are the rows, the columns and values I want for my uh, starting, uh, my defaults. And there, that's it with six minutes to spare. So any questions? Yikes. I can switch off the recording if people want to give their questions, but don't be recorded. I'll do that now.